in the hot seat today, something brand new from Tooltop. The Tooltop ET8135. It's sleek, it's small, and there's a lot going on under the hood. Thanks, Tooltop, for sending it in for this review. Here we go. Tooltop ET8135. We have another multimeter in the lab. The all new Tooltop ET8135. This little smart multimeter that you can stick in your pocket is a beast of a, a multimeter. Trust me, it's a lot more powerful than it looks. Hey, it chips in this pretty cool little svelte box. Comes in red and black as far as I know. No other colors, but still it's nice. You have a little bit of a color option. A good looking meter. And once we open up that box, there you go. Starting off with those test leads. Uh, a little bit of a step up from your average cheapo leads, but, uh, you know, hey, they're, uh, they're going to do the job. They're sharp, and they have that nice um, protected little fingertips there. Lose a cat rating when you take off the top like so, but uh, all in all, not too shabby. Now, one thing you got to take note of is look at the input jacks on those test leads. Yeah, they're either straight through type because of course this meter has those inputs on the bottom of the meter. So, oh, just take note of that. And by the way, yeah, you noticed it doesn't have a tilt stand either or a magnet or a hanging strap or, uh, why? Also comes with our handy dandy thermal couple because it does do temperature. And last and least is our infamous user manual. Hey, Not Too Shabby comes with some nice pics. Pretty detailed. Font is fairly small, so packing a lot of info into this tiny little manual. But uh, give it a read over because lots in here. Now, the meter itself, it is very small. Fits in the palm of your hand, so to speak. Looks like a smartphone, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Oop, just turned it on accidentally. But uh, nice rubberized uh, exterior here. So it is a bit of a boot. It does not removable, does not come off, um, but it gives a lot of added protection. Two flashlights, you get two flashlights on this. We'll test how bright those are in just a little bit. Um, touch button controls, obviously no standard rotary selector. Everything is done by the push of a button. You've got select, you've got manual mode as well as automatic. So lots going on here. Uh, yeah, anyway, look and feel wise, I love it. I love it. Oh, I keep turning it on. Hey, for comparison's sakes, I have it up against the ET13S from Tooltop, an awesome little thermal imaging slash multimeter uh, right here. And you can tell still this is a small meter, but still this is smaller. So it's definitely a tiny meter. All right, let's go ahead and turn the meter on since I keep turning it on anyway. And there you go, bada boom, bada bing, instant boot up or almost instant. And we are greeted with that awesome colored LCD screen into auto mode by default. And look at that, it has a temperature as well, 20 degrees here in the studio slash lab. Um, looking good, 10,000 counts, true RMS. If you see any flicker, it's only because of the video. There is no flicker in real life or real time or you know what i'm trying to say all in all nice meter and oh you know what i didn't even notice that but there is a plastic overlay oh it's in there really tough oh i gotta pause this just a second oh okay i wanted to share that moment with you here we go look at that oh yeah wow that was like stealth i didn't even notice that on top um, once again, El Gorgeous. Now, because of the nature of the screen, yes, it is susceptible to glare, but, uh, you know, hey, it's a trade-off, right? Indoors, not an issue. Outdoors, probably your mileage is going to vary, but it's probably not the uh, best display for the great outdoors, especially on a sunny day. Anyway, is what it is, but look at that. Very nice. Like it. Just in case you're wondering, yes, it will accept your standard test lead. Not an issue. The inputs themselves are not color-coded, uh, sadly, but we do have that little label on top here that has the uh, inputs with their colors. So red for your input, 
commoner ground, and finally the current over here on the left. But man, oh man, colored inputs would be nice. Sitting now in volts mode, volts DC, by the way, if you're interested, the accuracy on this is 0.8% plus or minus five digits. So not the most accurate of meters out there, but hey, 5.004 volts coming up and we've got that 5.000 volt reference. So four counts off, but not to worry, it's in spec. And once again, we are in auto mode. So let's take a quick peek at AC volts. And bada boom, bada bing, there is the frequency, 59.99 hertz, 60 hertz, and 121.1 volts. Handy dandy. And staying in auto mode, let's take a look at resistance. Do we have any resistance on those test leads? Oh, that's a good question. Nope, none whatsoever. And you can tell the continuity kicked in there. Okay, we're still in auto mode and we are hooked up to a precision resistor, 100 ohm. It's taken a while to get to a settled reading here. So coming in at around 101-ish, but yeah, it's awfully, uh, a little flaky there in auto mode, isn't it? Let's take it off auto mode and go right into resistance and look at that. Settles down completely, 101.2 ohm. So eh, goes to show you maybe if you want anything close to precision, that auto mode is not the way to go. Let's see how fast that smart mode is in resistance, shall we? Sitting at one mega ohm right now, coming at 0.995, three mega ohm, six mega ohm, 10 mega ohm. Well, not bad, not bad. Okay. 110k and 111 so you know it's definitely not the fastest in smart mode but at least it works already dial mode here we go have to hook up to our little diode tester starting off with the red led and you know what helps when you're in dive mode oh my god i'm not even gonna edit that out Alrighty, here we go. Dialed mode it is. Starting off with the red LED. It is lit with a forward voltage drop over to the green. Yes, two for two. The yellow, yes, three, four, three. The white, and finally the blue. And it is five out of five in terms of illumination as well as that forward voltage drop. Good job, tool top. Standard diodes. Not a problem. We're not getting that audible beep, but it's definitely working. Perfect. And we have a glorious 3.2 volts maximum output in diode mode. The relay is not overly noisy. You hear it every now and then, but it's definitely nothing too aggravating. Hey, you're going to get a relay with a smart meter. So uh, yeah, you got to learn to live with it. Man, oh man, I just don't know why they don't put a tilt stand with meter. A tilt stand or a magnet backing. Come on, guys. We need it. Okay, have it hooked up to that uh, precision output reference right now in low current mode. 100 milliamps. 100 milliamp. Spot on with that current output reference. Good stuff. So, yeah, smart mode also for current. That I like. Hey, let's try that smart mode in high current. Uh, sitting at six amps, current is not being outputted just yet, but here we go. And there we go, 6.1 amps, no problemo. Good stuff. Still have that current flowing through right now. And look at that, six amps. Oh yeah, those inputs are definitely looking hot. Been going on for about a minute so far. Meter itself, though, seems to be doing fine. It is a little toasty, but uh, hey, considering what it's pushing, it's to be expected. Now it's been about three minutes and same thing. So we got that hot spot there right on the bottom left part of the meter, obviously. Uh, but uh, hey, it held out really well. Ooh, that looks toasty. 
Alrighty, it is time for continuity. My favorite time. We've got the stock default test leads. Three. Oh, you know what? Three, nothing. Let's try an auto mode first. Oh! Oh, there it is, slow. But you know what? We're gonna do a manual mode. Let's bring it over to manual, shall we? There we go. I mean, it's fast, it's latched, it's loud. But there is a bit of a delay and it kind of lags too when it's latched. Ah, let's try the Pro Masters. Pro Masters. Maybe a little bit faster, but honestly. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it works a little bit better. Ooh, that is really loud. 76.8 decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. I thought it was louder, I thought it was like 80 something. That dual temperature display is really, really sweet. Look at that, 67 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius, dual temp, and that is so easy on the eyes, love it. By the way, that hole feature on here, nothing to get excited about, no, it's just your standard one touch hold. Yeah, too bad. Hey, check out those new test leads. Got them from AliExpress. BX11s. Paid like, I don't know, seven, eight bucks for these. They look very sweet. And I've heard good things about them. So uh, stay tuned for that review. Alrighty, without further ado, we're going to do our flashlight test. Check out the lumens on this bad boy. Now, this one has two flashlights, remember? Two LEDs, I should say. So that's definitely going to help in the lumen department. Alrighty. We are our standard test away. I've got the lights down, obviously. So uh, here we three, two, one. Oh yeah, check it out. 272 lumen. Two seventy four, but yeah, that's about where it stops. So. Now, if I cover up one of those, well, we're in max mode right now, so it won't make a difference, but theoretically, it should be half of that. So 274.2 Lux with the flashlight on. All right, here we are with NCV right now. Coming up is EF on the meter. Simple one push button gets you into the NCV mode, and look at that, not an issue. Really nice uh, display here, and I love the graph bar, the way they've utilized that, so very cool. And another wire that normally doesn't show up on a lot of the uh, meters in terms of NCV, but this one caught it. It is a slow um, emission, but hey, it caught it nonetheless. And here's the backing of a wall, and right on the other side is a light switch, and it found it again. Alrighty, after daddy, here we go, taking a look at the inside. First of all, on the opposite side, no shielding. Hey, no surprises. There are the two battery terminals that make contact with those springs, powering up this multimeter. Starting off over, oh, let's start off at the top for a change, shall we? At the very top, we have those two LEDs, two light emitting diodes right here. And look at that NCV, look at that NCV. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> they have used basically uh, an input instead of putting it where your input jack lead will go. Now they're using it for NCV and heck, why not? It's like a little tin oscillating can, right? There it is. And you know what? It does a bang up job. So, hey, it works. No complaints. And right below that funky NCV antenna, we have got, look at that. Yes, that's the LCD display driver from Shenzhen Titan Micro the TM1621B giving us that gorgeous display. Right above that, we have our piezo. And on the other side, oh, things get interesting, don't they? Let's start off over here with that little tin can oscillator. They're telling us what it is. It's a four megahertz oscillator and it's got that tubed shielding, which is actually a really nice touch. Below that here is our EEP ROM. It's the IC24C02. Ooh, 256 bytes of memory, an I2C interface. Um, what else? Uh, I don't believe there's any read or write protection other or any other type of security on this. It's a cheap chip. I mean, these EEP ROMs go for pennies these days. But if you notice the main IC, yeah, nothing on. 
nope, they're trying to fool us. But it could be a DTM 0660 from Dream Tech. Um, look at that QFP package over here. They usually are oftentimes found alongside those similar EEP ROMs. Right below that here, of course, we have our HF D31 Hongfa Relay, uh, which is what you see on most smart multimeters these days. Good stuff. Input protection, not a whole lot going on. We've got one lonely PTC over here. Uh, there is the soldering. Actually, not bad. Pretty good blobs of solder for those input jacks. Move it down a little bit. And yeah, check it out. That is a, yeah, not a current shunt. We have a current sensing resistor. Um, 0 0.01 of an ohm, I believe. One watt, one percent in place of a current shunt. So, uh, you know. Take it with a grain of salt, but it is what it is. And right below that, of course, we have our 5 by 20 ceramic fuse, 10 amp, 250 volt. So there you go. In a nutshell, uh, that is the internals of this little multimeter. Are we going to put it all back together? Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the tooltop. ET8135. Yes, yes, and yes. Not only is this a funky, spunky little meter, um, it performs really, really well. And don't get me started about that gorgeous display. Oh, it is so easy on the eyes. 10,000 counts, true RMS. This little guy has it all, but it doesn't have a tilt stand. Not even a magnetic backing. Come on, people. You gotta be listening, right? We need something. If you're not gonna give us a tilt stand, give us a magnet something to keep this meter upright. Ah. Uh, can get a little quirky in smart mode, um, maybe subject to the odd little bug, but generally speaking, it seems to perform okay. The other thing is you're gonna take this outside, that gorgeous display is really hard to read. It just doesn't do well in exterior lighting. Ah, too bad. That being said though, there's so many pros to this little meter. Not only does it have quality build, that nice rubberized boot, but the dial performance was out of this world. 10,000 counts, like I keep saying. Great NCV performance, even has dual LED flashlights. Man, oh man, this little guy has a lot. The tooltop ET8135 gets a solid four out of five stars. Hi. Yeah, this is one really funky little meter, and I think it makes a great addition to anybody's test bench. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. By the way, I'm going out to Pennsylvania to meet Paul, our resident Keep On Testing blogger. Hey, check out his articles on the Keep On Testing website, keepontesting.com. Some great, great stuff. You won't see it anywhere else. This guy is full of electronics knowledge. I'm gonna be visiting him and we're gonna have a little show and tell video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for watching. Till the next one, keep on testing.